Alrighty, what is going on, Pats Nation? You guys already know who it is. Patriots Couple here back with another video. I hope everybody had an excellent Thanksgiving despite the loss here. As we all know, New England Patriots had a really unfortunate loss here. 26 to 33 loss here against the Minnesota Vikings, a primetime game here on Thanksgiving. The final game in Thanksgiving, as it was an 820 game. Uh, and Going into this game, I thought the Patriots, quite honestly, were going to lose. I mean, this is a real testament for the Patriots for the second half of their season. To me, the Vikings are a top five Super Bowl contender. How I would rank them, I'm not sure. Maybe you can rank them in the comments section below. But for me personally, I think that the Buffalo Bills, the Kansas City Chiefs, the Philadelphia Eagles, the Minnesota Vikings, and the San Francisco 49ers. Those, those, to me, are the top five playoff teams, to me, in my mind. So, with that being said, I think the Vikings only have, what, two losses on the season, one of them coming from Philadelphia. So, with that being said, this is obviously a very, very good team. Obviously, also just beat Buffalo a couple of weeks ago uh, and really started the come down that Buffalo is currently having. I, and, and I really didn't think this game was going to be as close as it was. And this is a game that I don't want to necessarily say the Patriots should have won. Uh, but this should have come down much, much, much more closer to the wire. And uh, yeah, guys, we're going to hop into everything in today's video. Originally was going to go live, but it's a little after one in the morning when I'm recording this. So I thought it'd, it'd probably be easier for everybody else if we uh, we just make this a recording. So without further ado... Let's roll the intro before we talk about today's game recap. Next off, first off, y'all want to talk about Mac Jones, Mac Jones, baby. Mac Jones is back. Let me say for the people in the back. Mac Jones. Mac Jones is back. At least I hope so. We'll have to see how the rest of the season goes. I will say that this is uh, not a great defense that the Vikings have, especially their secondary. A lot of missing pieces there. A lot of pieces that they really just don't have in general. So the Patriots definitely were walking into a game where their uh, pass offense should have popped off in this game. That is what I will say. I even said this in my um, pre-game, or not pre-game, but kind of like um, collaboration video leading up to this game that I did with a couple of my Vikings YouTubers. Um, and I said, you know, you guys, you have a good defensive line. I don't think they're going to run the ball as much, and I think that they're going to try to pass the ball a little more, which they're going to have to do in order to be successful. they got to take advantage of the lack of the secondary that you have, and that's exactly what New England did it, and Mac Jones came in letting the ball up and I have not seen this version of Mac Jones at all this season the last time I saw this was last year probably before the bye week probably before the bye week last year is when I saw this version of Mac Mac Jones finishes this game 28 of 39 300 382 passing yards zero interceptions two touchdowns I, I thought he had three, to be quite honest with you. I thought he had three touchdowns, but it's okay. Still, a multi-throwing touchdown game, almost almost 400 yards, zero interceptions. Take care. He takes care of the ball. He doesn't even fumble the ball, let alone interceptions. He just doesn't turn over the ball. And 28 of 39. Not only was this the best we've seen Mac Jones all season, but this is the best performance that I have seen Mac Jones have in his entire two-year NFL career, preseason included. This was an absolute stellar game by Mac Jones, and this is a game we needed to have for it to be honestly even competitive. And the fact that we were competitive in this game honestly shows me a lot. You know, it's a very disappointing game. Ultimately, it comes down to that we lost, especially with the play calling, some of the stupid mistakes that we were having especially late in the game, not playing complimentary football. Still very annoying, which is what makes this loss uh, hurt the most. But the fact that we were able to keep up as much as we did with a team that I have as a, a real Super Bowl contender and a playoff lock does make me feel good going forward. The Patriots have the Bills twice, who I feel at least one of those games is very winnable after I saw how this team played. 
You have to play the Miami Dolphins, which for our luck, we're probably going to lose. You have the Cardinals, who are a bad team. You have the Raiders, who are a bad team. And then you have the Bengals. This game honestly made me a lot more confident for the second half of the season and made me a lot less worried than I was as we were heading uh, out of that bye week. But a little bit back here to Mac Jones. Um, you know, there, there were a couple of times I thought he had some questionable throws, but for the most part, I think he put the ball in the right place. I think that he was smooth with the throws that he was making. And also, he didn't just run away. I feel like all season we've seen Mac Jones get under pressure and he runs out of the pocket way too quick to try to pick it up with his feet. First off, that puts him at danger of getting injured, which we already saw this season, even though it wasn't his fault. And two, it puts us in a position where obviously Mac Jones isn't going to be picking up, you know, 10 plus yards of rush every single time. It's just the truth of the matter. You want to move the ball, give it to Ramondre or try to pass the ball. But we can't have Mac running it time after time. And I feel like today, he caught himself a little bit. He knew that he was scrambling at times, and he said, you know what? No, let me get the ball out real quick. So he starts to scramble. He gets out of the pocket. I thought his pocket awareness was great in this game, and you know, it was either dumping the ball off to a receiver or just dumping the ball off to Ramondre, who uh, I believe actually led the Patriots in reception today, but we'll get into the player statistics and all in a little bit here. The one play that uh, got me with Mac Jones that I said, you almost had a perfect game. You almost had a perfect game. Um, I forget what quarter it was. It, it might have been the third quarter or before halftime. Um, he's about to get sacked. He goes out of the pocket. He scrambles and he slides. What he should have done there is he should have thrown away the ball because what the Patriots essentially had to do then is Patriots had to use one of their timeouts. They could have easily had an extra timeout, but in this situation, Mac Jones slides instead of either running out of bounds or just simply throwing the ball away. And now the clock continues to run. And now you got to waste a, a, a timeout. So you could see he was visibly upset with himself after doing that. He he realized after he scrambled, shouldn't have done that. Um, but other than that, I thought this was a perfect game for Mac. It was a flawless game for Mac. And uh, for all you screaming, zappy, 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 um, this is exactly why I told you not to. It, it looks like Mac's back on track. And honestly, I, be I believe it was against the Colts. Um, it was after that Jets game where he almost threw a pick six. Since then, I feel like we have started to see the old Mac Jones come back. Um, and, and that's exactly what I expected happen. I think he was going to come back after that injury. It was just going to take some time, and, and he's proving just that. Well, let's get into a little more about the game here. So, like I said, this, this game for the most part was back-to-back. -back, you know, you score a touchdown, we score a touchdown. You go three and out, we go three and out. You score a field goal. We score a field goal. For the most part, the tempo was really just back to back to back. And, you know, you look at the, the first quarter. The first quarter went Vikings touchdown, Patriots touchdown, and then Patriots field goal. Second quarter goes Vikings field goal, Patriots field goal, Vikings touchdown, Patriots field goal. Then you come out after halftime, the Patriots get – um, the ball back heading into the third quarter. And on the opening drive, they score a touchdown. Then the Patriots, or excuse me, then they give the ball back to the Vikings. The Vikings score a touchdown. Then the Patriots go field goal. Then you go here into the fourth quarter, and the Patriots don't put up any points. That's a recipe for disaster. With how close this game was for the Patriots to not even put up a single field goal not even three points in the fourth quarter is a real problem on why this ended up coming down to the wire and ended up coming down to where we had to, to run what? I think it was like 86 yards or 80, 86 yards on that final drive to go ahead and score a touchdown in 50 seconds. Us not scoring points in the fourth quarter led to that. But like I said, I do want to touch on some of these player statistics here because this was a really good game, especially passing wise. Do, 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 do. Let me pull up these real quick. All right, there we go. So we already touched on Mac Jones. The Patriot game I thought was actually absolutely horrendous today. The weird thing about, about today, and, and this is your just classic primetime games, right? Like I, I said this coming into the game, I said, Something weird is going to happen because every single time primetime happens with the Patriots, 
just something unusual occurs. And, and that's what happened today. You know, today was just a case of everything that went wrong this season went right, went right for us today. And everything that usually goes right for us went wrong today. And that starts here with the running game. The Patriots had a total of 13 carries as a team. 13 carries from start to finish. We put up 45 yards, averaging 3.5 yards per attempt, zero touchdowns, a long run of 14 yards. Ramondre Stevenson had seven carries for 36 yards, averaging 5.1 yards per carry. The fact that he only got seven carries was absolutely mind-blowing to me. Zero touchdowns with a long run of 14 yards. Damian Harris had five carries for 16 yards. Uh, I mean, five, five carries for 16 yards, 3.2 yards per average. Zero touchdowns, a long run of seven yards. He also does go out um, at some point in the game. I forget what quarter exactly it was. He ended up after the game being seen on crutches. So it looks like he just comes back from injury and he somehow has another injury yet again. I believe it's a thigh injury. Uh, him being on crutches doesn't look like he's going to be playing for the foreseeable future. But then we get into the passing game. And this is another just little statistic, a little tidbit that I liked about Mac Jones is that we didn't see Mac Jones go to the same guy. And that's probably because Jacoby got beat up a little bit early in the game. He got beat up a couple of, couple of times, but still played through this game, which he probably shouldn't have. But Mac Jones gave the ball to everyone. And I think that's part of why we've been so successful. You know, I, I'm not leaving this game saying, why didn't we get the ball to this guy? Why didn't we get the ball to that guy? Because I thought today was one of those games where Mac did exactly what he has to do if this passing offense is going to be successful and this offense in general is going to be successful. And that's give what the defense gives you or take what the defense gives you and try to give the ball to several different people and not rely on just going to Ramondre and not relying on just going to Jacoby Myers. Okay, Devontae Parker, four receptions, 80 yards, 20 yards on average, a lawn of 40 yards and uh, was targeted four times. So he actually caught everything his way. Ramondre Stevenson, like I said, led the Patriots in receptions. No surprise there. I'm pretty sure he's done that all season long. Uh, but nine receptions, 76 yards, 8.4 yards per reception, zero touchdowns, lawn catch of 40 yards. And uh, I believe that was on a screen. And he was targeted 10 times. Nelson Aguilar, six receptions, 65 yards, 10.8 yards per carry, one touchdown, long catch of 34 yards. Total targets, eight. Hunter Henry. This, this is where it's going to get controversial. <laughs> Hunter Henry, three receptions, 63 yards, 21 yards on average, one touchdown, should have been two, and a long catch of 37 yards as he was targeted five times. Jacoby Myers only targeted three times with 62 yards, averaging 20.7 yards per reception. Definitely should have had a fourth reception there. Um, that's an easy catch for him, but again, he was injured, so I don't put much on him, uh, and he was targeted four times. Kendrick Bourne got a little involved today, too. I, I didn't really like that much of what I saw from him. And I think it was anything eye-popping or anything to really take away. But Kendrick Bourne, he was targeted four times, three receptions, 36 yards, averaging 12 yards per reception with a long catch of 17 yards and zero touchdowns. Again, Patriots put up a total of 382 yards. They were averaging 13.6 yards per reception when they were passing the ball. So absolutely spectacular day um, offensively. If we want to look at the Minnesota Vikings side, which kind of leads to the Patriots defense here a little bit, Kirk Cousins really didn't have a great day. He takes care of the ball for the most part. He's accurate. His completion percentage is high. He was 30 for 37. Okay. He didn't make a whole lot of mistakes. He doesn't put the ball in places it necessarily shouldn't be, uh, but he only puts up 299 yards, averaging 8.1 yards per reception. Three touchdowns, one interception. He had a QBR of 84.8 and a passer rating of 116.1. I think he should have had about two to three interceptions that I personally saw. To me, that goes back to somebody like Jonathan Jones, who I thought had a, a decent game, but it wasn't a great game, especially from, from what we've seen in the past. Started the game off with a penalty. He should have had an interception at one point, an easy interception. I think he should have had actually a Two interceptions he didn't have, um, but obviously he does make one of those. That was the only interception that Kirk Cousins did throw today. But outside of that, I thought Kirk Cousins did very, very well. Also, only sacked one time. 
very unlike our defensive line. That's something that defensively confused me a lot today. Uh, this offense for the Minnesota Vikings is obviously a little bit complicated because they have Dalvin Cook in the backfield and they have the best wide receiver in Justin Jefferson on the outside with a nice complimentary number two wide receiver in Adam Thielen. So you're going to see a lot of RPOs, but they have a terrible, a terrible offensive line, especially with Christian Darisol not even playing in this game. That entirety of their O-line should have been manipulated by the Patriots, especially the Patriots defensive line, which is one of the best in the National Football League. I thought this was going to be a multiple sack game for Matthew Judon. It wasn't. Patriots come out only sacking Kirk Cousins once with one of the worst offensive lines in football. I, I don't get it. I just don't understand. There wasn't a whole lot of situations where the Patriots got Kirk Cousin in, you know, second or third and lawn. Uh, the only times they did so would be like, you know, third and nine or third and 10. But, you know, I'm talking like third and 15, third and 20. And the only times we were getting in those situations was when they ran the ball and the Patriots stopped Dalvin Cook and company behind the line of scrimmage because the run defense today was absolutely amazing. Oh, my God. Killed it today. And we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. Um Today, it's really the passing uh, passing defense that struggled so much and not even really against a multitude of different guys, but really just really just one guy, you know, because outside of Justin Jefferson, these numbers don't jump off the board for me. Like I said, only 299 total yards here for Kirk Cousins, uh, but Justin Jefferson, I mean, th this man is a beast, a beast, and the Patriots had no answer for him all game, all game long. They had no answer for Justin Jefferson. And I guess, you know, really the entire league hasn't, uh, but you, you got to find a way to slow this guy down. Nine receptions, nine receptions for 139 yards, averaging 15.4 yards on average with a touchdown uh, and was targeted 11 times. So targeted 11 times and nine receptions out of those. Only two passes his way were not caught for 139 yards. If the Patriots were able to limit him, this offense for the Minnesota Vikings would have gone absolutely nowhere. Because really, the scapegoat for Kirk Cousins this entire game was Justin Jefferson. Anytime the Patriots got pressure on Kirk Cousins, he just threw the ball up. He literally closed his eyes and said, Justin Jefferson's down there somewhere. Let me just fling this thing up real quick. And he came down with the ball, as you probably expect. But outside of Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen had nine receptions for 61 yards, 6.8 yards on average and one touchdown. TJ Hawkinson had five receptions for 43 yards, 8.6 yards per reception and one touchdown. Jalen Merker had one reception for 25 yards. Um, and then after that, it really doesn't matter. But like I said, the Patriots absolutely shut down Dalvin Cook today. Absolutely shut down. Which is why I do wish the Patriots ran a little bit more of... Um, I forget what exactly personnel it is, um, but I wish they had extra defensive back on the field. I wish they ran with a little bit more secondary pieces in today's game, and I think maybe that could have slowed down this offense here for the Vikings a little bit. Uh, but Dalvin Cook, guys, 22 carries. 22, it's crazy statistic. 22 carries for 42 yards, averaging 1.9 yards per attempt, zero touchdowns, he had a long run of six yards, my friends. His longest run was six yards. Unbelievable. Alexander Madison, who I think is an underrated running back, three carries, 11 yards, averaging 3.7 yards per attempt, long run of eight yards. Kirk Cousins had one carry for negative one yards. Let me tell you, this defense has been what it has because of their ability this year compared to last year and previous years to actually stop the run. The Patriots are so versatile that there's really not one area of the game that game in and game out you can say we can exploit that, and they've proven that. The secondary is great, but honestly, if I'm looking at this Patriots team throughout the course of week one to where we are now, I'd probably say that what's impressed me the most and what's been more elite has actually been the ability to stop the run than it is to, to stop the pass or at least slow the pass down. So I thought that was an just absolute insane statistic in this game. 
But I do do want to talk about some of these calls today. Because I don't want to be the guy that says the referees are the issue. And I don't want to say that's why we lost. Because at the end of the day, there were opportunities outside of those calls to win this game, and we still did not. Okay? The referees made this game a lot more difficult for the Patriots to win, and the referees put the Patriots in a position to not succeed. I'm, again, I'm not going to say that's why we lost. Because, again, the Patriots had opportunities outside of this to win. But the referees did more to harm the Patriots 100% than they did just, I don't want to say help the Patriots, because that's not the right word, but to uh, just do your job. Because they didn't do their job today. And it's not just on the Patriots side. There were a couple of calls there for the Vikings that they didn't call. Trent Brown had a false start at one point, but... You know, other than that, it was like first down for the Patriots. So, like, what's it going to be? First and 15 then? It's really not a difference maker at that point. It was on the final drive. It's not a big deal. The Patriots got screwed over in key pivotal moments because of these refs. And I actually have a couple of them written down. Um, and I think I actually have a couple of things that I can even show you guys, too. Yes, yes, because we are going all out. Probably the biggest one we're talking about, and, and the biggest one I'm hearing about post-game, surprisingly to me, this, this, this one was annoying, but to me, the uh, Kyle Duggar, no block to me, which we'll get into in a minute, or or no um, holding call on him on that kick return for a touchdown, that, that made me the most upset. Uh, but the Hunter Henry reversed touchdown call is what is getting everybody the most pissed right now. And we all know the play, okay? I'm going to show you the picture. I'm going to show you the picture, all right? This is not a touchdown in, in the NFL, apparently. This is not a touchdown. And I'm sure you've all seen the play. If not, you can easily go in and just look up Vikings Patriots highlights, and, you, and you'll see this play. So right on the goal line. Actually, I think I, I think I actually have the play pulled up too, which which I could show you guys too. We'll we'll pull it up right after this. Um, but by NFL rules, the way that this would or would not be a catch. So if we're going to talk about a catch, what he has to do is he has to secure the ball on the way down. It cannot hit the ground. It cannot bobble. He has to have control of the ball. Has to secure it. Point blank. Basically, essentially meaning that ball cannot hit the ground. Now, that's a little bit of a different story if Hunter Henry's a runner. Hunter Henry did not establish himself as a runner. Now, if he was a runner and let's say he dropped the ball, it would be a fumble. But because he did not establish himself as a runner, which is two steps at minimum, he needed to come down and possess the ball, meaning that that ball, again, cannot hit the ground, it cannot bobble, it cannot move. Essentially, why they're saying that this is not a touchdown is because they're saying when he went to the ground, it bobbled and hit the ground. In this screenshot, you can clearly see one hand on top and right underneath, right underneath, you can see a little black, a little black right under there on the football. That's Hunter Henry's glove. Hunter Henry sandwiched his one arm under and one hand on top to secure the ball. He's clearly over the line. That's clearly a touchdown. No, no second guessing that unless you're blind. You can see his hand right under there. That is a touchdown catch. And we'll even look at this play because there's a play I saw on Instagram. This, this, this edit isn't from me, by the way. This is uh, something that I did see on Instagram. I'm not sure whose it is, so I can't give credit because I've, I've just seen this everywhere. Um, but there was this exact same instance, I believe, earlier this season it was. Um, it was either last year or earlier this season with the Colts and Chiefs and star tight end Travis Kelsey has this exact situation and his and the ball that he has literally, literally flies and hits the ground. Um, and this this was ruled a touchdown for Kansas City. But the play here for the Patriots was ruled an incomplete pass. Let, let's watch it. Let's just watch that a couple more times here for you guys, right?
I, I really can't understand this. Um, everybody was fuming. Hunter Henry was fuming. And for obvious reasons, post game, he even said himself, he thought it was a catch. Um, but at the end of the day, the ref said it wasn't. And, and that's kind of that you kind of just have to move on. Bill Belichick, when he was asked about it, was not happy. Um, and actually I have that video here for it to you guys. So let's, let's, let's play it. When somebody asked Bill Belichick about that Hunter Henry play, this is, this is what he had to say. Why don't you guys go to the officials with your pool reporter and ask them about the play and let them explain it to you, right? Like, isn't that what you do? Thank you. Now, Mac Jones, of course, was asked about this same thing. Now, why is this such a big deal? Well, at the end of the day, the Patriots' loss came down to the fact that they didn't meet the Vikings' final touchdown. Again, 50 seconds left in the game. Patriots had no, uh, excuse me, no timeouts after using all them to stop the clock um, defensively against the Vikings offense there in order to actually get one more possession back before the game was over. But if the Patriots were actually given this touchdown as it is a touchdown, then this ball game is uh, potentially different. And this is what Mac Jones had to say about everything. Yeah, I think obviously... You know, the refs have a job to do, and they looked at the review and re ruled it incomplete. So we got to move on from that play and, and play the rest of the game. There was plenty of time left, and there was other times we could have punched it in, and that wouldn't even have been an issue. So kind of the same story there, but um, did some good things. Obviously not enough, good enough um, in the long run, and one call can't determine the outcome. we got to be able to do better so it's not even close. Basically, <laughs> from, from Mac Jones, that's exactly the answer you would expect. So the ref's got to be better. I mean, in, in these key pivotal moments, I mean, that's a touchdown. That's an easy touchdown. You got to look at that. That's a touchdown. That's seven points you took away from the Patriots. And then there's seven points you gave to the Minnesota Vikings. Again, this, this isn't like, again, Trent Brown late on the final Patriots drive with 50 seconds to go like 86 yards down the field, which would have been a first and 15 at that point. This is you taking seven points away from us and granting seven points to the other team. That's what we're talking about. This is the difference between the no calls on the, uh, the, the, the Vikings and the no calls on the Patriots. Like I said, though, another no call, which I, I don't have a, a photo or video of this one. I'm sorry, guys, but it was after the Patriots go down the field, they score a touchdown, they kick the ball off, and the Vikings get a kick return for a touchdown. The Patriots go from the lead to it being tied up in a matter of seconds. And everyone says, well, well what happened there, Global? I mean, there's a lot of guys on the field. At the end of the day, you, you, can't, just, you can't just blame it on the refs. And I'm like, well, I do blame it on the refs because each blocker has their own guy. They're all out there already blocking someone. There's not just one guy saying, you know, hey, you got this, you got this, Duggar. You got this, all right, bro. All right, sweet, got you. Sweet, I'm just, just going to sit back here and watch, all right, man? No, everyone has a guy they're already blocking, right? They're all in a certain position. They're all blocking based on the specific return play that they're, they're, they're scheming up there, all right? Now, Kyle Duggar has the guy on the outside. If that guy get, gets past Kyle Duggar, there's no one that's going to bring him down afterwards. Kyle Duggar's containing the side at that point. Containing the sideline. It's his job to make sure a guy doesn't get past. And this isn't on Kyle Duggar because he clearly gets held. He clearly gets held. The guy's going right past him. And whoever the Vikings blocker was there grabs Duggar and just holds his hands, preventing him from turning around and being able to make the tackle. And he holds him the entire time until the ball carrier is past view of Kyle Duggar to be able to make that play. And it's not called. I'm looking there the entire time waiting for a flag. I, my whole family's freaking out. I'm saying, no, nah, it's a flag. Don't worry about it. It's coming back. Doesn't come back. And it's an easy seven points. And what should have been a lead for the Patriots became a tied game. And again, a matter of seconds. You got to make those plays. If you're the refs, you have to make those plays. Now, another call that should have been made here by the refs it was late on, later on in the game. It was third or fourth quarter. This is third down for the Patriots. If this, if this penalty is called, the Patriots get a fresh set of downs. Now, what would they have done with the play after that? Would they have 
gotten three points? Would they have punched it into the end zone? Who knows? But if at least, at least would have given them a fresh set of downs. But on third down, Mac Jones gets sacked and gets pulled down by the face mask. Pulled down by the face mask. If you're a referee, how do you not see that? How do you not see a quarterback getting brought to the ground, being pulled with one hand by his face mask? Doesn't get called. Patriots have to punt the ball away and put up no points. It, it's ridiculous. I, I feel like refereeing this entire season, not just for the Patriots, but not even just in this game, just all season long has been so horrific. And the NFL needs to figure this out. Now, I have one more picture I want to show. This was the final play of the game. Mac Jones launches the ball down to Nelson Aguilar. Actually, a really good pass. It was a much better pass than I was honestly expecting uh, for Mac Jones. And it was, it was pretty accurate. And this one's more on Nelson Aguilar. This one's not on the refs. It's, it's not on the Vikings. This one's a little bit more on Nelson Aguilar, which I was like, oh, of course we're going to Aguilar. I, I thought he was going to Devontae at first. I said, oh, my God, we might have a big play down the field right now. And maybe... Just maybe if if he can, you know, kind of slide to the sidelines out of bounds, maybe we can punch it in and actually tie this thing up. But unfortunately, Nelson Aguilar lets this plop through his hands and does not get it. Now, I will say, if Nelly made this play, it would have been a spectacular play. This, this shouldn't have been a, just a gimme play. But you can clearly see in this photo, this is a pass that Nelson Aguilar very, very, very much could have had and then somehow lays on the ground for two minutes afterwards and I guess got injured or something. But he also slowed down at one point. He slows down, which is why I think this pass was also a little bit out of, uh, I don't want to say out of reach because, again, that goes right through his hands. Um, but the reason he had to dive a little bit is because he slows down. If he doesn't slow down and he goes the same speed he was going from the start of the snap to the end of the snap, that ball's right on him. Now, of course, you're, you see this defender right here. That defender's going to pop you. But at the same time, you make the play, and that, that ball's right on you. That, that's a must, must make catch there by Nelson Aguilar, who unfortunately just does not come down with the ball. Overall today, guys, like I said, we didn't play complimentary football, and I think that was the biggest issue for me personally. Uh, we're used to this defense and special teams playing great, and, and today they didn't. We're used to this offense not being great, and today they were. If we could have had the Patriots offense, or excuse me, the Patriots defense and the Patriots special teams just be how they were all season and not go through a fluke, then the Patriots would have easily won this game. A hundred percent, no doubt in my mind, the Patriots would have won this game. Because at the end of the day, you gave up close to 200 points to one wide receiver. You did very good at stopping the run, I'll give you that. But nonetheless, even with only allowing a total of, what did I say, 57 rushing yards as an offensive unit, only 57 rushing yards as an offensive unit for the Vikings, they still put up a total of 33 points. Not to mention, again, you had that kick return for a touchdown, which we already, we already went through. I'm not even going to touch on it again. But then you also had the Patriots punter who – who at this point, I don't even know his name because he's a backup and, and he'll be out of here in a couple of weeks. He had a uh, a punt here late in the game for like 25 yards. 25-yard punt late in the game where we, we need you to clutch up. Again, bad refereeing at the, the biggest moments, not complimentary football, and making the worst, worst plays at the absolute worst times when you're saying we need a great play from you right now you do the opposite and you give us the worst play you possibly could have um at, at best you gotta just hope that this is the spark this is the spark we wanted to see from the offense because last year we saw the patriots go into the bye week with a great offense i think like a seven or eight game win streak and come out not knowing what they were doing on any side of the ball this year we were hoping going into the bye week with this offense being horrendous and not knowing what we're doing, we're going to come out with at least some identity. And I will say, now two weeks out of the bye week, 
I think this offense has found its identity. Uh, and we're going to have to see how do they play against Buffalo with a better defense than Minnesota has. How are we going to showcase the rest of the season? How are we going to showcase against another potential playoff team like the Bengals? A lot of questions. Another playoff team like the like the Dolphins. But I think that the Patriots offense for the second half of the season, at least after the bye week, is definitely going to be better than it was prior to the bye week. And as long as this defense and special teams can get it together and they don't flop for the rest of the season, um, I think the Patriots are going to be successful and they're a playoff team. Um, like I said, this loss sucks at the end of the day, just coming down to some of this pivotal stuff. The referees with stupid calls, you know, Nelson Aguilar just letting the ball fly through his hand. Um, and just some stupid mistakes by the Patriots in general in pivotal moments. But the spark I saw from this Patriots offense with Mac Jones finally looking like himself again, you have something to look forward to, Pats Nation. That's that's what I'll say. But what are your guys' thoughts on this game? Let me know in the comments section below. Remember to leave a big like on this video and subscribe to the channel for all of your New England Patriots news. But like always, I appreciate you guys for watching and never forget, go Pats.